Hello everyone and welcome back to another Dark Souls 3 Weapon Showcase. This time we're using the Moonlight Greatsword which has horizontal slashing R1s. Its R2s are an overhead slash followed by a horizontal slash and when charged they do release beams of moonlight. Its running attack and backstep R1 are a spin around slash. When two handed its R1s are overhead slashes slightly angled. Its R2s are horizontal slashes. And again, its R2s do shoot out beams of moonlight when fully charged. Its skill, this time around, is called Moonlight Vortex, which releases a beam of moonlight in an area of effect around your thrust. As far as this weapon's performance in PvP is concerned, I honestly expected it to perform worse than it does. And there are a few reasons for that, but I'll get into the details on that in just a minute. For now, we will start off with the basics of the weapon. And the Moonlight Greatsword, this time around, requires 16 Strength, 11 Dexterity, and 26 Intelligence. Nothing really out of the ordinary there. It has a D scaling in Strength, an E scaling in Dexterity, and a C scaling in Intelligence when fully upgraded to plus 5. And for those of you familiar with the Soul series, you're probably wondering, why does the Moonlight Greatsword have any scaling that influences physical damage? And that's because, this time, it actually deals split damage. And, understandably, that's not necessarily an ideal thing. So, that's why I thought that this weapon wouldn't be overly... viable. It wouldn't be as good as it had been in the past. You get where I'm going with that. Split damage is generally something you want to avoid, and that does still remain true. However, this time around, the Moonlight Greatsword has very high physical and magic base damages, and that really does mitigate the fact that it is dealing split damage. So it's got, at plus 5, a physical base damage of 144, and a magic base of 242. So even though it does have low scaling, it still, uh, it still does lots of damage, but it's not a real concern. I expected it to be worse, I really truly did, but it's not, and I'm okay with that being the way it is. Aside from that, this weapon cannot be infused, it cannot be buffed, and as you guys have seen by now already, when you do a charged R2, it drains your durability, not your focus point bar, and it drains it by 4 per use. So you've got that going for you. That way you can really spam those moonlight spells, things, whatever you want to call them, out as often as you feel necessary. Now that said, I wouldn't recommend that because uh, they're not really all that viable. They kind of suck, actually. But I'll get into the details on that when we're going over the cons of the weapon. First off, we'll go over the pros. And the first pro of this weapon that I want to list is actually its damage on critical hits. It's really, really good. This damage is just insane for a great sword class weapon. I mean, what was that damage I did in that fight earlier? 1,000 damage on a critical? Without a hornet ring? Yeah. Yeah. That's saying something right there, guys. So if I can deal that much damage without a hornet ring, without a fully optimized build for this weapon, then just imagine how good it would be if I did focus on all of that, if I did optimize, if I did use a hornet ring. You could probably one-shot quite a few people with this thing, and that's saying a lot for a great sword class weapon. Typically, you know, one-shotting people with criticals, that's a ultra great sword sort of thing, or a great hammer sort of thing, or a great axe sort of thing. But a standard great sword class weapon? That's that's a rare moment. So that's something to really keep in mind. This weapon can be extremely dangerous. Other pros of the weapon, I would definitely say that it's charged R2's the ability to shoot out a beam is a pro. However, I would say that it's more of a pro for PvE than it is for PvP simply due to the fact that in PvP the attack is so slow, so unreliable, and so easily punishable that it's not going to be a good strategy 90% of the time. Other than that, its skill, Moonlight Vortex, I am a huge fan of. I do not believe that it can be parried. I've had people try, as you can see throughout this video guys, I've had many, many people try parrying me. And Moonlight Vortex is my go-to attack when that is the case. I've never been parried while doing it, I don't know if it can be parried, if I'm wrong, please do let me know. But I, from my experience with it, I do not believe that attack can be parried. So that's a very good thing. 
It deals lots of damage. Nothing to complain about with that. Easy 600 damage for me at the very least. And uh, you can combo it pretty well. That's one of the nice things about it. It does have a slight AoE around the side of it, but as you guys just saw in the previous fight, it's not really, really wide. It's just wide enough. And at the end of that fight, if I had aimed slightly over, if I had manually aimed just slightly more over, it probably would have gotten it. Its tracking is decent, but it's not always enough. So, it is what it is. Other pros of the weapon, though, really, I don't have very many. I mean, it's a good weapon, don't get me wrong, it's got some good things going for it, but it's mostly just a standard, stereotypical greatsword. And that's not a bad thing, don't get me wrong. It's got some decent hyper armor to it, but it's nothing to write home about. And overall, I have no huge complaints with this one in particular. As far as the cons of the weapon are concerned, I did sort of mention already that its charged R2s are way too slow to be viable in PvP, but for PvE, they're actually pretty useful. Only downside to those, even still, is when you do hit with a charged attack, when you hit with the beam of moonlight, it doesn't deal that much damage. You really need to hit with the sword and the beam to deal considerable amounts. And that's not a bad thing. Honestly, I'm actually very okay with that. I wouldn't want it to be too easy to just spam out moonlight shots and have everything die. You know, there's got to be a balance to it, and that does help with that. That said, uh, other cons of the weapon, it's hyper armor, like I said, it's really nothing terribly special. It's nothing to write home about. It's not all that great. It doesn't break people's poise, it doesn't break their hyper armor as easily. And that's really about all I've got for the cons. Uh, one final pro that I do have is that it's actually got a very good varied moveset. Very good varied moveset. Huh, that's an interesting way of saying it. Um, you know what I mean, though. So, with that, you can pull off some nice combos, you can really mix up your attacks on people trying to parry you, and overall, it works very well. So, it is what it is. But that's all I've got for this one, guys. I hope you have enjoyed this one, found it helpful in one way or another. Please like, subscribe, and all of that good stuff. And I will see you guys next time.